Handheld gaming is something that has always been of interest to me. Hey, I even talked about some on this channel. But my first handheld, like many people, was a Game Boy. Well, to be precise, mine was a lime green Game Boy Color. But what if there was a modern handheld that could play your old cartridges? That system is the analog pocket. As I asked the question, should you get one? The analog pocket was first released December 2021. So it's a few years old at this point. But there have been many times where it has been difficult to let's say attain. As it's currently out of stock as I am making this video. The analog pocket is made by a company called Analog. Who have made a bunch of other systems to play your old games. Such as the Mega SG which can play Mega Drive games. Or the upcoming Analog 3D which can play Nintendo 64 cartridges. To explain a bit more about how it works, we're going to have to talk about FPGA. FPGA, or Field Programmable Gate Arrays. What I think it means in short, is that it's an electronic component used to build reconfigurable digital circuits. But what does that actually mean for these analog systems? It basically means it's a chip used to recreate the hardware circuitry of classic game consoles. Which means the consoles aim to be close or better than the originals. With features that help reduce input lag and things like HDMI output. FPGA also allows you to use your original game cartridges. What that means is better quality than your standard emulators. But you can only play games built for the hardware. Or maybe not. Now you hopefully have a sort of idea what analog is all about we can talk about the pocket. The analog pocket, it can play Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games out of the box. So it has the same playing capacity as a GBA, but with save states. But it looks more like a classic Game Boy than a Game Boy Advance. But the build quality is very good, being that it's a premium product and with that comes a premium price. But we'll get on to that later. If it was good to play and hold, well for me at least. I'd say its biggest strength is its screen, which looks great. The majority of Game Boys on the market don't have backlit screens, and the ones that do are not to this quality, unless maybe you get a custom one. The main issue with the screen is that your Game Boy Advance games don't make use of the whole screen natively unlike the original Game Boy and the colour. If you choose to do so, you can stretch out the screen manually using the game settings. The sound is fine, but I wouldn't say it's a standout. The Pocket also has optional adapters that you can purchase. One for the Game Gear. They also sell a Pocket Adapter Set, which features the TurboGrafx-16, Neo Geo Pocket, and the Atari Lynx. While these systems are not as popular as the Game Boy, it's a nice option to have if you've got any games for those systems. Or maybe just want to start collecting them. I got the Game Gear one since it was the only one in stock at the time. It does what it says on the tin. It lets you play Game Gear games with the same functionality you get with the Game Boy games. But the Game Gear games do protrude out over the pocket, losing some of its aesthetics, if you do care about such things. There are some other features that I personally haven't used, such as the Nano Loop and the GB Studio, which is something you can make use of the system's SD card slot. Do you want to know something else you can use the SD card slot for? That's right, it's emulation, which I've done a little bit of. I won't go into details of the how, you can look that up yourself if you want to get into it, 
But yes, I did get some emulation working on the analog pocket. But let's talk about what people might consider to be its major downside. Its price and also its availability. The price of the pocket is $299 which is quite steep, especially since there are a variety of handheld emulators, which are cheaper and in some cases smaller than this one, like the one I got. But I did say it's a premium product, so that is what you're paying for. But also, I'm from the UK, so shipping was an extra $50, and also there were some import fees and taxes on top of that. I later brought the Game Gear adapter, that was another $30, and then $50 for shipping. If I wanted the adapter set, it would be another $99, with what I assume would be another $50 shipping for that. The other problem is that stock is always issue with the pocket and some of the accessories, meaning it might be hard to get everything you want at the same time to try and save on those shipping costs. For example, I wanted to get all the adapters in one go, but the set of three was sold out at the time. So what does this all mean? I think the analog pocket is a high quality system. It's probably the best way to play some of these handheld systems, but there are cheaper handheld options that can play more systems, and also more powerful systems at that. For about an extra £100, you can get the cheapest Steam Deck, and that's a great handheld emulator system, as well as being a handheld gaming PC. What this means for the average person who's looking for something like this, there are probably better options. But for the enthusiasts who want the highest possible quality, for those like Analog who care about video game preservation, or maybe just have a large collection of Game Boy games, I want to play them on a modern screen. So for those people, go for it. Well if you can find stock, let's not even get into the limited editions. As to what I think, well I knew what I was getting before I got it, so that's about what I expected. I do wish shipping was a tad cheaper, but hey the shipping was fast, so if you're a hardcore enthusiast then go for it. Well, if you can get one. With that, it's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. All the engagement things on screen, flashing up right you now. Also, you're going to see a recommended video if you're watching this far. And that's it. Tis Lou, the video will end shortly.